Warm salutations and welcome to today's talk, Efficient Network Deployments with Action Batches. I'm John Kukta, and I'm a product architect here at Meraki. Along with my counterpart, Corey Gwynn, I look after the heart and soul of Meraki APIs as a core part of the cloud platform. This talk is for folks who are already somewhat familiar with our APIs and who are responsible for large deployments. That might mean admins with more than 100 Meraki devices or more than a couple of partner integrations. This talk is also for folks who are developing software tools for service providers or managed services providers, or those who are developing paid applications, such as those that our ecosystem partners provide. In any case, if you need to optimize your API usage for efficiency, you should benefit from this talk. So why are we talking about action batches today? Imagine the following scenario. You work for a national corporation with one headquarters, several secondary national offices, and thousands of branch locations in your country alone. On your office campuses, you manage everything from Meraki appliances to switches and access points to cameras, sensors, and more. Uh, at each of your branch locations, you manage a single Meraki appliance, but also usually several switches, access points, cameras, and sensors. In total, you manage upwards of 200,000 Meraki devices across thousands of locations. Where would you start? How would you track progress on this deployment? And how would you manage it over time? Well, this is a great opportunity to use the dashboard API. And given plenty of time, you might not even need action batches. But how many API calls might that take? Let's ballpark some numbers and bear with me while we do a little math. Um, first, let's estimate that your config work amounts to 10 API calls per device, which is probably a more complex config. That's two and a quarter million API calls total. Uh, now let's also consider that you can run up to 10 API calls per second per organization. You have six organizations, so you can max out at 60 API calls per second. Let's presume you're really good at parallelization and that the average response time for each call is under one second, just to keep things simple. Let's also presume that nobody else needs to use the API on those organizations, so you're taking full advantage of your API budget. If you do run 60 API calls per second, then you should complete two and a quarter million API calls in about 30, you know, exactly 37,500 seconds or about 10 and a half hours. And that's presuming no mistakes, go backs, client failures, et cetera. We haven't even mentioned the additional time you'll need to prepare the configs themselves, like write the API client, track your own progress and verify the configs or deal with environmental factors conspiring against you, like Todd from security hassling you about leaving the building so he can lock up. Listen, Todd, it's crunch time. Also, if you have other folks with using the API with those orgs at the same time, then it would take longer because those folks are sharing that API budget. If only there were a way to batch all of these changes. Enter action batches. Action batches are a Meraki dashboard API feature that you can use to condense up to 100 API requests into a single batch. Different batches can be run in parallel, and they can also be run as background jobs, which we call asynchronously. Each action batch is atomic, meaning that the whole batch either succeeds or fails. There's no in between. That's good because it means you can sleep easy if one succeeds. And if it fails, well, despite the code we write, we're all human and it is easier to clean up mistakes when they're discrete and predictable. So let's revisit our math using action batches this time for the same theoretical deployment. Using action batches, conservatively speaking, we can condense two and a quarter million API calls into action batches of 100 each. But again, let's be conservative. Let's say you average 75 actions per batch. In total, you'll have 30,000 action batches to execute. Again, still a big deployment. But you can run five action batches at a time inside of a single dashboard organization. And let's estimate that each action batch completes in about 10 seconds. So. Considering your company's hypothetical Meraki dashboard deployment, your deployment split across uh, six organizations, 
you can run 30 batches at a time. In that case, you're completing 30 action batches every 10 seconds, or to simplify, three batches per second on average. And each batch is 75 actions. So with 30,000 action batches to process, you could be done in 10,000 seconds, which is under three hours. So with action batches, you just reduce the runtime of your entire deployment from a hell of a long day, upwards of 10 hours, to a chill afternoon. You can go home, have dinner, resume that manifest marathon, whatever you want to do. Plus, you didn't consume your company's entire API budget for more than an entire day. If you're running some monitoring application that also uses the API, I'm sure those folks who manage that won't be too thrilled. Sounds better, right? Ultimately, your deployment is much more feasible with action batches. Next, let's answer how you can get started with action batches. Action batches are an API only feature. You will not find them in the dashboard GUI. To create them, you will use the dashboard API and you will need read, write organization admin privileges. An overall guide and detailed documentation are available on our documentation site, meraki.io. The key endpoints will leverage today are those that create and then return the action batches so we can check on the status. And the docs for these endpoints are linked here in case you download this deck later. Let's look at the anatomy of an action batch. Every action batch has these components. Organization ID to indicate which dashboard organization the batch will run on. Confirmed, which is a Boolean that indicates whether the dashboard API should start the batch immediately upon submission or create it without starting it yet. In some cases, you may want to create it and then run it later. Synchronous is the next Boolean, which indicates whether the batch runs in the foreground, which would result in some blocking I.O. for your application, or as a background job, which is generally preferred. And again, those background job, we call that an asynchronous action batch. Status is an object with information about the batch's status, such as whether it is complete, whether it failed, etc. And actions, which is a list of the actions you'd like the batch to execute. If we look at that actions list, every item in the actions array will have these components. First, resource which is the relative URI to the API resource or endpoint that you're invoking in the action. Operation, which is the REST operation to execute on that endpoint. And body, which is the REST request body for that action, if relevant. So now you know what it takes to actually submit an action batch. But let's look at some tools available to help you get the most out of action batches. The first is our official dashboard API Python library. Using Python to interact with REST APIs requires the use of some library like Python's request library to handle the HTTP requests. However, instead of using the request library, you can use our official dashboard API Python library, which wraps all of our dashboard API calls into native Python functions so you can interact with the API the way you would interact with any Python function. Instead of mapping variables to complex JSON structures, which in Python would look like strings if you were using the request library, you can simply create your configs as Python dictionaries and lists, if relevant, and apply them using the library's Python functions. To get started, simply install it using pip install Meraki. Here's an example. This is real code of creating an action batch in the Meraki library by the request library. As you can see in both of these, they're both written in Python, but on the left, this code uses the Meraki library, and on the right, it uses the request library. Using the Meraki library, we can keep those payloads, such as the actions list, as an actual 
Python list rather than the JSON string, which we have to use if we use the request library. And of course, manipulating strings like that using the request library, that's a more brittle implementation, right? Much more difficult to change a single uh, parameter inside of a JSON string than it is to change a single value for a given key in a dictionary uh, or index of a list. Using the Meraki Python library, we also don't have to worry about headers or text encodings, which can complicate your deployment if you use the request library. Next, let's look at another feature in the Meraki Python library that makes creating action batches even easier. The Meraki Python library also offers a built-in batch class, which enables you to create properly formatted JSON actions for action batches using the same structure as the library's Python functions that directly invoke API endpoints. So let's demo the batch class. Here, we have a switch with a default configuration. Port one is in trunk mode with the native VLAN one. First, we'll use a Python script that invokes the Python library to change the port to access mode with VLAN 10. Script is pretty straightforward. We're importing the Meraki library. We're initializing the dashboard session and a couple of variables that we will use. Then this is the command to update the switch port. And then this will print the response and it'll do a little JSON dumps to format it, make it look pretty. So pretty quick, already done. So we see this uh, response uh, port ID, and it was uh, updated to uh, VLAN 10 and type access. So we refresh this page. And we'll see that the dashboard is now reflecting the changed config. Now, that's fine. But if you want to use an action batch to do this instead, then you would need to create that action in the format that the action batch expects. And that's where the batch class comes in. Invoking the equivalent function in the batch class won't change the config or submit any API requests. The code is virtually identical, but the function instead returns a properly formatted action that you can submit in an action batch. This is the function that will create that JSON structure for you. This means that translating your existing code to action batches is easier than ever. Let's compare these two scripts. They are virtually identical. You can see that most of the characters don't even change when I switch between the two, uh, and that's by design. In this one, however, it will not actually run the function. So just to verify, let's change this back to 10, or rather back to 1. And now let's run this. Uh, dashboard batch switch update device switch port action. And we'll see that it does not change the config. Instead, it simply gives us this uh, JSON structure that we will use in order to uh, submit an action batch using that action. And it's already formatted for you. You didn't have to uh, manipulate any Python strings. Uh, it just created it. And the config did not change. So we've used the batch class to create the action that we're going to use inside of an action batch. Uh, it did not actually change the config, which is good because we're not ready to actually change any configs yet. The next item is a new module called the action batch helper. We already know that action batches are a powerful tool for streamlining your bulk configurations. But in our scenario, we need to submit 30,000 action batches. For this, you'd need to write some client logic to split those actions into all those individual batches. 
And what if one of the action, what if one of the batches in that huge list requires uh, one of the earlier batches to succeed? Uh, you probably wouldn't want to submit the second one before the first one completed in those cases, right? Um, you'd just be wasting your time. So uh, if you need to submit them in a linear fashion, which of course takes longer, um, that would necessitate some additional client-side logic. The action batch helper makes it easier to work with action batches at massive scale. Handling these concerns for you when you have tens or hundreds of thousands of configuration changes to make. The key features of the action batch helper are that it creates discrete action batches of a custom size from an arbitrary list of actions, submits the batches only when there's room on the organization's action batch queue to run them, allows for simultaneous or linear batch submissions, depending on what you need to do, and it optionally generates a JSON preview of the entire list of batches. So let's demo the action batch helper. This demo uses an organization that has 603 networks. In each network, we're going to rename the first SSID, then rename the network, then change the network time zone. All told, in this smaller demo, that's 1,809 actions which we're gonna split into action batches of 75 each. The batch helper is going to do that work for us and then handle putting them on the queue until they're complete. Let's look at just one of these networks to observe the changes. First, we can see the network name and we can see the time zone. Then on the SSIDs page, we can see the name of the SSID. And those are the things we're going to change. This demo script is available on GitHub, so I won't spend too much time detailing it. I will simply run the script, which will then do the work. And we'll, and we'll look at the output together. So first, it's validating all of the input uh, from those actions that we've created. And of course, it used the batch class to create those actions more easily. It then uh, confirmed that we were ready to actually start submitting the batches. It checked the batch queue for that organization. It saw that there were zero active action batches. And it submitted the first batch. Now, this one does not require any sort of linear submission, so it's doing them in parallel. And then it started creating the next action batch. And it showed that there were 24 action batches remaining here. Confirmed against submission and then checked the queue and saw that there was one active, of course, which we, we just submitted. Then it submitted the next batch. And it continued in that fashion until it eventually built up the queue. Then it waited a few seconds to check and it submitted the next. And we can see that this went through a total of 25 batches, submitting them, confirming that there was space on the queue to actually start them. And now we only have five remaining. So it's doing all of this automatically for you. This means that you didn't have to write your own logic to check that there were any, uh, any available space on the queue um, or to split that huge list of 1,809 actions into batches of 75 actions apiece. And it's completed now. So we can see that it's complete. And in this case, there were no failures. So if we go back to this settings page, we refresh the page, we should see the network name changed and the time zone changed. And it did. Back to Los Angeles. If we look at the SSIDs page, then we can see that the name of the SSID also changed. So we just got that done across 603 networks in no time at all. Pretty cool. 
We just published this module on GitHub, and I hope you'll find it useful. To recap, what did we learn today? About action batches, why to use them, what they are, their anatomy, then some helpful tools. Our official Python library and how to use it to submit action batches. Our library's batch class to simplify creating actions for action batches. The action batch helper module and how to use it to submit action batches at massive scale. I hope that you now feel empowered to take your deployments to the next level and that I've helped you to be more efficient when operating at massive scale. Thank you for your time.